Okay, so today we're going to load up some Fuji Color Super HG dating back to 1993. <laughs> so this could either work or go horribly wrong. Hey, good morning from the woods. Easter Monday, gonna be trying to take even better photos with my 4x5, learning what I learnt the first time, uh, knowing that what I now know. One, one roll of film is 30 years old, so the title of this video might be, in today's video we're going to shoot a 30 year old film. Will it work? Will it fail? Don't really know. It's said to be more blue sky coming, so by the time I faffed around and set up, Ideally, light on the leaves on the floor and light on the leaves on the top as well. That'll give me maximum bokehness. Maybe I'll set a window a couple of shots here. Fuji Color Super HG. What I'm going to do is put it in my 6x12 roll film back. And then, if it doesn't work, I've lost less photos and I'll use a second back to mate it's like a safety so shout out to analog cameras in the uk for kindly sending me this film free when i bought one of their lenses as i understand it's c41 film as you see here which means i can develop it in black and white chemistry um so you, you may cry that i'm going to develop vintage color film in black and white but i'm not shooting the film to get crazy amounts of grain and things I'm shooting it to hopefully get some nice pictures so it's still good I think to give it a new look at that give it a new lease of life or <laughs> give it some life rather than it be stuck in a cupboard forever the problem with loading video one hand is trying to do it while holding the camera at the same time but check out this two hands <laughs> load film in the dark in uh, not in direct sunlight, so let's turn around. <laughs> Probably a little bit late, but and then hold the tension on there. And then I'm going to look for an arrow in here, in that hole. Hopefully, we'll have one there. Bingo. Uh, clip that into place. Make sure, make sure that's locked. And then we advance the film until. We get to one. There, good to go. So that's going to give me the same width as 4x5 film, but no like wasted sky space. And the advantage obviously is you can shoot with um, 120 film then on your 4x5 camera. Okay, so you might notice these four holes. I'm wondering why the holes in the front of my Intrepid camera? And it's for one special reason. This lens has protruding screws. So the only way I could get it to fit was to get my dad to help me <laughs> use one of his tools and cut these out. So this is the only camera that this lens will fit. Um, and it is a Tessar 210 3.5 now if you know anything about large format that's quite fast 3.5 210 is fast and i managed to find it on ebay so um it wasn't particularly expensive and I asked the guys to mount it to a board that would fit this and they had more diy skills than me so they kindly did so this is a more unusual lens because it does have an aperture ring which many um barrel lenses don't. I think this is classed as a barrel lens. So it allows me to stop down to get slightly sharper results. So we'll maybe try shooting it at a few different uh, aperture settings. It does crazy. It's pretty cool what you can see just by holding it like this.
The lighting in the first shot is different to the others because the sun was just starting to come out. Stop down to 5.6, this lens is much better than expected and very happy with the results. Pass. Okay, this is a real shock. This lens should be sharp and I was amazed that I managed to mess it up considering I used a shutter release to take the photo. I'm not quite sure how I made such a mess of it. Fail. <laughs> So my film, I was exposing at ISO 12 because it's such an old film and it's 30 years old so I did three stops brighter and it was an ISO 100 film so 100 to 50 to 25 to 12. So ISO 12, my lens is 5.6. So if I just meter this, so the highlights give me 60th of a second. The darkest area is a fourth so then I'll take an average between the two. 30th. So also by the way I develop my film I can protect the highlights slightly when the film's developing so that way hopefully I'll keep my highlight detail so I'll try to give an exposure for the majority of the scene the most important bits which would be the camera and the majority of the, the foliage and if some of the highlights blow out slightly hopefully by doing less agitation while developing and using Rodinal stand developing or semi stand so by turning the tank less, you basically keep your highlight details better. Um, so for this kind of scene, where well, you've got bright highlights here, um, hopefully this type of developing will work, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll soon find out. <laughs> You'll see the results before I will. Fancy background. So I'm just looking at the light and a bit of structure and then some leaves and the, yeah, the way the lights sit in the background. And yeah, that's all I needed. Okay, let's go back. Okay, this is better. This is what I expect from this modern lens. It should be sharp and in this example it really shines. Amazing image quality and super round little bokeh balls. 5.6, really good wide open. Okay, so to try to talk you through my composition, my plan was to have my camera in the centre and then an arc of branches one side and an arc of branches coming the other side and then bokeh at the bottom and bokeh at the top to give you like an oval of bokeh like that. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that should give you a preview of the bokeh. Roughly like that, obviously with the camera in focus. So then with a the swirly lens you should hopefully get more of a swirling effect because the branches are wrapping around. So my first composition was the camera here and that tree arcing over. So you had bokeh at the top. Try and do it again. Bokeh at the top, bokeh at the bottom and then come in the middle and then luckily the sun then broke through a bit better so I wanted to shoot more at the sun to get better bokeh balls okay so I'm really happy with this shot so at 4.5 I wasn't expecting this lens to be amazingly sharp but it's just got a really nice pop to the image and also quite nice bokeh as well. Very round bokeh compared to more swirly lenses. As this Tessar lens has got no built-in shutter and the camera itself has got no built-in shutter, I designed this lens hood slash cap by taping a cap to a hood 
to allow me to quickly put the cap on and off with hopefully without knocking the lens therefore hopefully getting sharp images I then added a few filters to try to give me more time to take the lens on and off Got my masking tape top and bottom, and that allows me to frame up better with a 6 by um, 12 back or 6 by 9 back. So the uh, exposure is not easy with an iPhone, but you can hopefully see really nice bokeh. This is the Leica lens. Okay, looking at this photo, disappointed. Last time I used this lens, it's pretty sharp. If we zoom in, there is some sharpness, but it's just not in the right place. Luckily, I did take a second shot. Okay, my final shot and my safety shot using the same settings. Sadly, it's still soft. When you look at it at first glance, the MPP looks soft, but I do now know the problem. So because I had the lens tilted over, the plane of focus is just too shallow to get all that I wanted in focus. So that was user error, not lens error. Use my trusty reflector. I was going to use the white side if it was too sunny, which is why I brought this one. But I needed to use the gold side because I was kind of in the shade myself. But then with this, I can light up the camera to try to give a exposure more similar to the background. So that was my, my plan. And then I shot the same scene with a modern lens with a automatic shutter. I did it with a vintage lens with an aperture setting so I could stop the lens down. And then I used a polarizing filter to try to make the leaves go more uh, bluey white in the in colour so then in black and white this should be more white so you'll see it more and then my third lens is a vintage Leica lens which is this one which is a Lights Hector 150 2.5 now it looks different because I've taped on a ND filter to give me a two-stop ND so it turns a 2.5 into like a almost a 5.6 I guess and so then that gives me enough time to do cap off cap on hopefully and get a usable exposure that's the plan so on this camera i've got it slightly tilted forward because i want my plane of focus to go that way so i get a the main lens and the lens board a little bit of more uh, sharpness on the front and a little bit of sharpness on the back here so i want the plane of focus to go like that as much as possible but then as you can see the camera angle is also that way so i needed to turn the camera front board like that can you see it tilted that way from being straight and then that then turns your focus that way so then your focus is going that way in line with the front of the board this way sorry <laughs> in line with the front of the camera model this way we'll see how how successful that was in the final photos okay so after waiting maybe an hour this morning for the sun to finally break through the weather app was completely wrong it's like full sun and it, there was no full sun. I was like, I'm here and there's no full sun. I was almost going to kind of give up and go back and I'm like, I'll just wait a bit longer and if the sun breaks through, I'll shoot my six photos on my vintage film. And to make it simple this time, I shot all photos with a Intrepid, I believe it's a Mark III, could be a Mark II. It's one of the old ones. I'm now tempted to um, maybe get the latest Intrepid camera because I believe they've made it huge amount of improvements since the very early full wood models because that would give me a perfect sweet spot between the MPP which is a bit more precision but it's still really heavy it's like 2.6 kilos pretty heavy if I'm for flying this is compared to this which is I believe I say Mark 2 or Mark 3 this is one kilo 
I've weighed out my scales. I have cut bits off so it might be slightly lighter than what it should be, but it's too wobbly. Let's get back and develop this film and fingers crossed we've got something. If not, <laughs> I'll show you up till now and at least I've talked you through what would have been correct. And it's all a really good learning curve. So even if the photos are rubbish and I get nothing, I've learned a lot. You don't need 4x5 cameras. You just need any camera that inspires you to get outside and take pictures. And I just had, I think, two hours of fresh air, maybe three. Let me check. <laughs> okay, let's go get this developed. Oh, my knees. <laughs> Sat down too low. <laughs> 